This is the new Renault Megane, and it is one good looking family hatchback. In fact, it's way better looking than the old car. The old one was a bit more like Megane Griffin, a bit of a munter really, whereas this new one, no, it's definitely Megane Fox, isn't it? I mean, I love the design. It, it looks like a concept car with the, with the front headlights and that big grille and the back, the back especially is really beautiful. Yeah, this is a car that's actually reasonable value for money. It starts from £18,000, but you can save money on that. If you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk to find out the best deal you can get on this new Renault Megane. So, gorgeous on the outside. What about the inside? Well, I must say, I'm actually a little bit disappointed. It's all a bit dark and drab in here. Now, the material quality in your direct eye line is pretty good. Look, it passes the Carwow flick test, but lower down it, Ow! It, yeah, it doesn't. That's a similar story in a Volkswagen Golf, really. And this car, you might notice, it's got this huge portrait screen here, which is the kind of thing you only get on real top-end cars. And it looks wonderful, dead easy to use as well. And if you click up there, you can see our full in-depth review of the infotainment system by watching our in-depth interior video review. The only thing is, is that that screen is only available on the Dynamic S models and above. So you have to pay extra for those if you want that screen. And it's well worth doing because you also get a digital driver's display. You get a reversing camera, you get lane departure warning, dual zone climate, and on the whole, it's pretty good. So too, it could be spaces. So you've got some big door bins and on the whole, the rest of the could be spaces are satisfactory for a car of this type. So moving to the boot. So the capacity, it's, it's average. You know, it's bigger than a Ford Focus, which is titchy and smaller the Nate Peugeot 308, which is massive. But the problem for me with it is there's not really anything clever about it. And the first thing to note is this huge, well, there's a deep lobed lip and then there's this huge bumper, which is, well, if your suitcases are heavy, that's gonna be a real pain in the back. And then there's nothing really clever about this boot. So you've got, is that a false floor? No, not really. It's just where the, uh, the tire repair kit goes, but you could stuff some stuff over there, but you can't raise the boot floor up to make a flat load area. And there's not really many useful tie down hooks it's like Renault hasn't really bothered with the boot then when you fold the seats down yeah look at that you get a massive ridge there so it's gonna be really awkward to slide things to the back speaking of the back let's move on to the back seats so I'll just move these out of the way so you can see what's going on right so this new Megane is a lot more spacious in the rear than the old one so I'm 5 foot 11 ish and I've got lots of knee room decent headroom people over six foot will be fine you can carry three people at a Porsche. It's not the best in class, but it's not the worst because you've got this wide middle seat. And while there is a hump in the floor, it's not too big. The only mild issue I have is that the foot, well, the foot wells are quite small. So when you do feel a bit cramped at times and you sit very low with your knees quite high, which does affect your comfort over a longer journey. But on the whole, not too bad in the back seats. And if there's just two of you, you can fold this down and rest on it. And some cup holders there. Now, for more information on this car's practicality, click up there for an in-depth review where you can see what it's like with three people in the back of this Megan, how easy it is to fit a child seat and just how much stuff we could cram into the car's boot. So far, the new Renault Megan is a massive improvement on the car it replaces. But does this continue out on the road? Oh yes, they've done quite a good job with this car actually. You know, it's, well, it's very, very comfortable. The suspension does a fantastic job of ironing out the bumps in the road. And on the whole, it's a really quiet, relaxing cruiser on the motorway. Also, it won't go into a big French drop. If you chuck it into a corner, it can cope. It's got enough grip. The only thing is though, that the steering well, it just feels a little bit too light. I mean, it's great in town, that is, but when you're going faster, it's got all the resistance of a big, fluffy souffle. Now, on high-spec cars, you can press a button to firm up the steering, but then it feels, well, a bit weird and odd, a bit like a souffle that's collapsed. In fact, the controls, the brakes, and especially the gear shift, it's all a bit stodgy. Oh, and the auto isn't that good either. As for engines, well, my tip's this, get the 1.2 litre turbo petrol because it's reasonably nippy and fairly economical. But if you do lots of miles, you're gonna want a diesel and the 1.5 litre in this car does a pretty good job. It's got enough punch for overtaking and Renault says it will do 76 miles per gallon. Now, if I look at the trick computer, I'm doing only 59. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. In terms of visibility, well, it's generally okay. These pillars are quite fat, but the, the worst thing is the view out the back, that rear window is really small. Now, if you click up there, you can actually see for yourself by joining me for a 360 degree passenger ride. 
Now, if you notice a whistling sound in my pieces to camera, it's because there was some interference with our mic. Don't worry, it's not the car. However, there are a few annoying things about the new Megane. There's no clever place to store the portal shelf when you're not using it. Under there, yeah, it doesn't quite work. Renault likes to call this trim artificial leather, but it just feels like plastic, if I'm honest. I love the portrait style screen, but that's around. It looks like it's still in the prototype phase and someone accidentally signed it off. The glove box is all right, but it could have been huge if Renault could have bothered to move over the fuse box over there for right-hand drive cars. From a distance, this little aerodynamic bulge makes it look like you've got a dent in your car. Thankfully, there are some cool features on the new Megane which help make up for all this. You can get LED coloured mood lighting like you get in Audis. You can download various apps for the infotainment system from the Renault R-Link store. Look, there's one here called Space Dog. There's an onboard eco driving monitor to help you be a more efficient motorist. You can play artificial engine noises inside the car to make it sound like a motorbike or even a spaceship. GT models get rear wheel steering which makes the car more manoeuvrable at low speeds and more stable at high speeds. So then, overall, what do I think of the new Renault Megane? Well, low spec versions can feel a bit miserable on the inside and the gearboxes aren't great. But this is a fabulous looking car and it's comfy and practical. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and find out the best deal you can get on a new Renault Megane at carwow.co.uk. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to our channel. And if you click over there, you can watch our detailed practicality, infotainment and 360 degree passenger ride videos for the new Renault Megane. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the Groove Armada shaking that ass song from the Renault advert to the past on the car stereo.